Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Adams, and you're listening to the Money Girl Podcast. Thanks so much for downloading the show. It really means a lot to me to have you here. As always, I promise to make it worth your time by bringing you the best content, ideas, tools, and resources to help you live a richer life. Now, if you're ready to improve your financial life, working with a financial advisor or a retirement planner is one of the fastest ways to do it. Advisors provide a variety of services, but they're commonly used to help pick investments and create a very clear action plan for achieving long-term goals, like saving for retirement. While this sounds terrific, it can be surprisingly difficult to find a good advisor. How do you know where to go? or if you should trust someone's advice to begin with. This topic was inspired by Erin B., who posted a really great question on the Money Girl Facebook page. She said, As excited and motivated as I am to make my money work for me, I'm also very cautious about trusting my financial future to just anyone. Do you have any recommendations for how to find a reputable advisor? Erin, you are so right to be cautious, and thanks for asking the question. Today, I'm going to take you through the best step-by-step process that I know to find a trustworthy financial advisor. I also created a free assessment tool download that gives you an easy way to compare and rate advisors so you know which one is best for you. If you want to get the free download right now, just text the word ADVICE to the number 33444. It's A-D-V-I-C-E, ADVICE, to the number 33444. If you value your money as much as I do, choosing a financial advisor should be a very deliberate, thoughtful decision. You're going to partner with someone or an investment firm to achieve goals that are critical for your financial future and happiness. Getting a personal recommendation is a great start. However, just because you know someone who is happy with his or her advisor doesn't mean that he or she is right for you. So here are six steps to find a trustworthy financial advisor. Step number one, evaluate your needs. Before you can begin a search for a financial advisor, I want you to be clear about what you're actually trying to accomplish with your money. In other words, be prepared to articulate the problem that you need him or her to solve for you. Here are some examples. I want to retire by age 60 and maintain my current lifestyle. I just had a significant life event or income change that I need help managing. I want to put my child through a college that will probably cost close to $50,000 per year. I want to make sure that my investments are allocated correctly in order to achieve my financial goals. Or I want to pay off certain debts while still saving enough for a comfortable retirement. If you have fairly simple goals, you'll be a good match for many potential advisors. But if your financial situation is complex because you have a high net worth, you're a business owner, or maybe you have offshore accounts, you should look for an advisor with that kind of specific expertise. Step number two, consider your attitudes. The second step in finding the right advisor is to be mindful of your investment attitudes. Are you extremely conservative and feel really uncomfortable taking any amount of financial risk? Or does swinging for the fences with the possibility of taking some losses along the way in order to make higher returns seem really great and natural to you? This is important because knowing your investing style can help you eliminate the wrong advisors. Some prefer active investing. That's much more aggressive and aims to beat average market returns in the short term. Other advisors believe in passive investing, which aims to mimic the market over the long term by owning a highly diversified portfolio. The bottom line is that not all advisors have the same investing philosophy. It's important that he or she can explain their investing style to you and that you're fully in alignment with it. Step number three, request proposals. Once you know what you want to achieve with your money and how you feel about investing, it's time to reach out to potential advisors. Using a site like Wealthminder makes it incredibly easy to submit requests online and get free proposals from multiple advisors. According to the Wealthminder founder and CEO, Rich Ellinger, 
They give prices as a flat fee with no hidden costs. They check the qualifications of every professional in their network. I love that. They guarantee satisfaction or return your money. And they work with fiduciary advisors only, which means they're professionals with a legal obligation to put your best interests first. You can also find fee-only advisors in your area by visiting the National Association of Personal Financial Advisors at napfa.org or the Certified Financial Planner Board at cfp.net. Don't worry about remembering those links. They'll be in the show notes in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Step number four, evaluate proposals. Once you connect with a potential advisor, remember that looks can be deceiving. Whether an advisor is old, young, works independently, or is part of a big firm, doesn't tell you if he or she is competent. Unlike other professions that require a degree, financial advisors don't have to earn one. So you want to look for certifications that tell you they really know their stuff, like certified financial planner, chartered financial analyst, and chartered financial consultant. If you need tax or estate advice, consider using a certified public accountant, a tax accountant, or an estate attorney. Now, back to finding a terrific financial advisor. Step number five, interview candidates. This is where the rubber meets the road. No matter what kind of advisor you need, I recommend that you interview at least three before hiring one. If you're married or have a partner who shares your financial goals, make sure you both participate. I would never consider having a financial meeting, even a preliminary one, without my husband. You and your spouse or partner are a team. You've got to be working together to accomplish the same financial goals. You might arrange to meet in person, talk on the phone, or have a Skype video call or even a Google Hangout. There's no rule that says you have to work with an advisor who lives in your area. I live in California now and work remotely with an investment manager and a CPA who are both located in Florida, where I used to live. Be ready to lead the conversation with questions that get him or her talking openly about themselves, their current clients, and how they prefer to work. For 10 essential questions you must ask before hiring an advisor, I mentioned that free cheat sheet that I created for you called the Financial Advisor Assessment Tool. It's a one-page PDF download that's going to make it really easy to rate and compare multiple advisors so you know who is the best match for you. To get it, just text ADVICE to the number 33444. You can also get the Financial Advisor Assessment Tool by downloading it on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com. Just look for this episode, which is number 397, called Six Tips for Finding a Trustworthy Financial Advisor. And the last step, number six, set up your first meeting. After you choose an advisor, find out what documents you should have on hand during your first meeting or what you need to send to the advisor in advance. For instance, some may ask to review your tax returns, investment statements, or pay stubs. Set up a meeting date that gives you plenty of time to prepare. And again, if you're married or in a serious relationship, make sure both of you can attend the meeting. Be ready to answer questions about your ongoing expenses, your current investments, and your financial goals. And guys, if you don't know all the answers, that's okay because it's just part of the planning process. Take notes during the meeting and never be afraid to ask questions. I don't care how silly or elementary you think they might be. You're the client. You're there to get the advice and the information that you need to move forward. Using a financial advisor to achieve your goals can save you time, help you make more money, and keep you disciplined about following a sound investing strategy. If you have a money question, post it on the Money Girl Facebook page, just like Erin did. And for more tips and advice, you should sign up for the free Money Girl newsletter. And you can also get my personal updates by opting in at lauradadams.com. As always, I'm glad you're listening, and I'll talk to you next week. Cha-ching! That's all for now courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life.